Algebra 3, Chapter 1, Section 7, Linear Inequalities. First, let's talk about how uh, solutions to inequalities are presented. First of all, remember that inequalities don't have individual number solutions like equations do. We're not going to write x equals 3 or x equals negative 5. Instead, they're going to be intervals, like x is less than 2 or x is greater than or equal to 8. We can also use set notation to express these intervals, and I can tell you for sure that uh, when you take college algebra, it will be expected of you, so this is a good time to get this notation down and to practice it. For example, x is less than 3 can be written as the interval from negative infinity to 3. The left-hand part indicates where the answer starts, and the right-hand part indicates where it ends. Since this answer doesn't really have a starting point, it just it, it's everything up to 3, we indicate that by using negative infinity. If it's in between two numbers like this, 1 is less than x, which is less than 5, then we have a starting and ending point. Notice a slight difference here. This time we have x is greater than or equal to 2, which means 2 to infinity. But notice we're using a squared off bracket next to the 2. The reason for that is that this is x is greater than or equal to. Anytime you have a squared off bracket, it indicates that x can actually be that number. In the previous examples, we didn't have an equal underneath the inequality symbols, so we only used parentheses. Infinity and negative fin infinity will always have the rounded parentheses next to them because you cannot reach them. They are not numbers. And here we have x in between 1 and 4, but it can also be 1 or 4. So notice again we're using the squared off brackets. It starts exactly at 1 and goes to 4. All real numbers is expressed in set notation by using negative infinity to infinity. And this is what I just mentioned a minute ago. Parentheses indicate the number is not included in the answer, which would be a less than or a greater than. Brackets in indicate that it is, and that's where we have the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to. We always use parentheses next to infinity or negative infinity. And we also have a couple of terms here. An interval is said to be bounded if it has at least one bracket, and unbounded if it does not. Inequalities have properties similar to equalities, but there are some important differences. And here they are. First of all, the transitive property of equality, well, it works for inequalities too. If A is less than B and B is less than C, then A must be less than C. The addition of a constant is still a good property. It still works. If you have an inequality, if you have A is less than B, adding the same number to both sides will still result in the left-hand side being less than the right-hand side. Addition of inequalities. If A is less than B and C is less than D, then adding the two lesser numbers together will still be less than the two greater ones added together. Multiplication by a constant. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. If you are multiplying both sides by a positive number, then if A is less than B, AC is less than BC. No problem, everything stays the same. You just multiply. However, if you are multiplying by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality sign. So if A is less than B and C is negative, AC will be greater than BC. Anytime you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality sign. This is going to be the same for division as well because division is multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to work for division too. If you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, you must change the inequality symbol. When two inequalities apply to the same variable or expression at the same time, you can combine them into a double inequality. For example, if we know that negative 4 is less than or equal to 5x minus 2, and we know that 5x minus 2 is less than or equal to 7, then we can write it as negative 4 is less than or equal to 5x minus 2, which is less than or equal to 7. And the neat thing is that you can solve it 
this way. Now you can pull it apart into two separate problems and solve both parts, both problems. Or you can solve it all put together and really it's just kind of like a three-sided problem. Whatever you do to the middle to get x by itself, you do to both ends. So for example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the 2 to the middle, to the left, and to the right. So I get negative 2 is less than 5x, is less than or equal to 5x, which is less than or equal to 9. Then I will divide by 5. Negative 2 fifths is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9 fifths. And I can uh, leave my answer like this. In set notation, I would have the squared off brackets, negative 2 fifths, comma, 9 fifths. All right, try this problem. You're going to write an inequality that represents the interval. Indicate whether it is bounded or unbounded. So we have 0, 9. Take a minute and try this. If you need to, switch the recording off. Okay, you should have written 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9, because x is in between 0 and 9, and they are both included, and it is bounded. Now try 11 to infinity. Okay, you should have that 11 is less than x, or you could have written x is greater than 11 because x goes from 11 up, and this would be unbounded. Now we're going to solve some linear inequalities, and you want to include a graph with your solution. You will be asked to do this on both tests and quizzes. Pause the recording and try these, and then resume the recording to check your answer. First try 4x is less than 12. Okay, divide both sides by 4, and you get x is less than 3. And then we draw a number line with that answer on it. Uh, notice a slight difference in how we're drawing the number line now. We used to use an open circle to indicate that 3 is not included in the answer or we'd use a closed circle if it was. Now what we're using instead is either a parenthesis or a squared off bracket. It matches the set notation. So we have kind of an open parenthesis on the 3 and the arrow pointing to the left. Now try negative 2x is less than negative 3. Pause to do this and resume the recording to check your answer. Did you remember to reverse the inequality sign when you divided by negative 2? If you didn't, it will get you the wrong answer, so be careful. And on a number line, we put our endpoint at approximately 3 halves, 1 and a half, and we draw the arrow to the right. And again, notice we have the, open, the rounded parenthesis. All right, let's try this one. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume the recording to check your answer. So the first thing we did was we added the 6 to both sides, then I subtracted the x from both sides, and multiplied by negative 4 to get rid of the 1 fourth. When I did that, I had to reverse the inequality symbol. And here's what it looks like on a graph. Now this time we have a greater than or equal to. So I'm using a squared off bracket to indicate that. Getting a little more complicated, try this one. Pause the recording to give it a try and resume the recording to check your answer. Distribute the one half. Subtract one half from both sides. Five halves minus one half gives you four halves, which is two. Subtract the 3x from both sides and we get x is greater than or equal to 2 and there's our answer on the number line. Let's try another example. Oh, we have a double inequality here. You can split it up if you want to, but it goes much faster if you treat it like one problem. Let's pause the recording, see if you can do it, and resume the recording to check your answer. The first thing I'm doing is I'm multiplying all three parts, the left, the right, and the middle, by 3. Next, I'm going to add 3 to all three parts, and then finally divide by 2. Now try this problem. It looks a little weird because the brackets are kind of 
the inequality symbols are kind of reversed of what we're used to seeing. I'll give this one a try. Yeah, I subtracted one from every side. And because it looks a little strange this way, I put it in the order we're used to. We're used to things going from least to greatest, so we'll put it back the way we're used to. We get negative 3 fourths is less than x, which is less than negative 1 fourth. Now let's talk about absolute value inequalities. If you remember from the previous section, absolute value equations have to be solved twice. You have to write two equations. Well, when you solve absolute value inequalities, you have to write two inequalities. So that should not come as a big shock. It's the same idea. As with the equation, the first thing you do is you write exactly what you see without the bars. The second inequality, though, you're going to do kind of what you did with the equation. You're going to write it with the opposite sign on the number on the right, but you also must flip the inequality sign around, just like we do when we multiply or divide by a negative number. Before you do this, however, and this is very, very important, you must make sure the absolute value is absolutely alone on the left-hand side of the inequality. Do not split it up into two inequalities until you have isolated the absolute value on the left-hand side. If you neglect to do this, you will mess the problem up. Very important. So for example, now here I've got the absolute value of x over 2 is greater than 1. The absolute value is alone on the left-hand side, so I'm ready to go ahead and split this up. I write x over 2 is greater than 1, which is what the problem stated, and then I do x over 2 is less than negative 1. I solve both parts. My answer is that x is less than negative 2 or greater than positive 2. The reason for the or is you can't have a number that is both of these things at the same time. When you can have a number that fits both of them, that is where you will put an and, or you'd even combine them into a double inequality. All right, let's try this example. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume the recording to check your answer. I'll give you a little warning. This one's kind of tricky. Think about what an absolute value means. This is saying that the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than negative 1. But an absolute value, whatever comes out of it, is always positive. It can never be less than negative 1. So there's actually no solution to this problem. And they will throw these at you from time to time, so be alert. Okay, this one you can actually do. So give this problem a try, pause the recording to do it, resume the recording to check your answer. Okay, so I did 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9. I subtracted the 3, divided by the negative 4, and when I divided by the negative 4, I made sure to reverse my inequality. And then we reduced. And my second problem, notice what I did. 3 minus 4x is less than or equal to negative 9. And then I go through the same problem-solving process. Again, I have to divide by a negative 4, which reverses my inequality, and I get x is greater than or equal to 3. This is what it looks like on a number line. Notice the lines, the arrows go away from each other. This is an or situation. X is either less than or equal to negative 3 halves or X is greater than 3. The numbers in between won't work. If you don't believe me, pick a number that's not covered on the graph and try it for yourself. All right, try this one now. This is one I warned you about. Notice you have a two on the outside of the absolute value. Think, what do you need to do first? Pause the recording, give it a try. Resume the recording to check your answer. First thing I did was divide by that negative two, divide by the two, sorry, it's not negative, divide by the two. Then I'm gonna do one part of the, the inequality, x plus 10 is greater than or equal to 4.5. Subtract 10 from both sides and then do the second inequality. x plus 10 is less than or equal to negative 4.5. And I get x is less than or equal to negative 14.5. And again, this is going to be an or. x is either less than or equal to negative 14.5 or it's greater than or equal to negative. 
All right, let's try a word problem. A company expects its earnings per share, E, for the next quarter to be no less than $4.10 and no more than $4.25. Now, no less than means that amount or more. So the earnings have to be greater than or equal to 410. No more than means that amount or less. So they also have to be less than or equal to 425. In other words, it has to be in between the two numbers. Just like this. And that's our solution. In this case, they just wanted you to write the inequality. You are considering two job offers. The first job pays 3000 per month. The second pays 1000 per month plus a commission of 4% of your gross sales. How much must you earn in gross sales for the second job to pay more per month than the first? So we need to set up an inequality and then solve it. Why don't you pause the recording and give this a try and then resume the recording to check your answer. Okay, for one month, the first job is gonna pay you 3,000 flat. The second job only pays 1,000, but you get 4% of sales. So 1,000 plus 0.04x. How much you earn on your second job depends on how much you sell. We want to know when is our second job going to be paying us more than the first. So we want to know when is the second job greater than the first. So we're going to set up this inequality. The 1,000 plus 0.04x must be greater than 3,000 and we solve for x. So according to this, when we sell more than $50,000 worth of merchandise, then the second job will pay more per month than the first. For what annual interest rates will an investment of $1,000 grow to more than $1,062.50 in two years? And we have a formula a equals P times 1 plus RT. A is the amount at the end of the term. P is the amount you're starting with or your principal. R is rate given as a percent and T is time in years. Pause the recording, give this a try and resume the recording to check your answer. Okay, there's the information they gave us. Now let's put it into an inequality, we want it to be more than 1,062.50. So it's gonna look like this. And now we're gonna solve for R. We divide by 1,000, subtract one, and divide by two. And remember that R is a rate, which is a percent. So it's 3.125%. The interest is more than 3.125%, then we will get the amount expected.